5th of August 2012 is going to be a fantastic day in the park, the Greenhead Park. The Jamaica National is having a celebration for the 50th anniversary. We are also coordinating that with the um, Olympics. On that day, the uh, Bolt, Usain Bolt, you all know him, will be running. And we are expecting Jamaica to have one, two, three. Jamaica being a small island is one of the most famous islands for athletics. At this time, we've got 10 people that have done their 100 meters and the 200 meters on record. There will be a giant screen in the park. But everybody will be there to celebrate this wonderful achievement. We wish you all, we hope all of you will come and enjoy a wonderful day. There are lots of things to gain. It's not just the athletics. We have all the great reggae artists, um, dance, music, a lot of things to to uh, do. And of course, you will remember the Jamaican food, Akin Saltfish. Don't miss that. Try it. Jamaica 50th anniversary of independence is an exciting time for me. The reason why it is, is because independence to me uh, means that we are, as a nation, has been able to take over and carry on and survive. The 50 years of Jamaican independence, the feel I get has to come from my parents, from the uncles. I feel what they feel and there's mixed feelings. Many of them thought it was a wrong thing. Many of them, many of them felt jubilant about it. But uh, I feel it's a good thing in the sense that they were free to express themselves and try to thrive and keep up with other nations that are progressing and that they can evaluate what they've done. When we look at Kirklees with all of its diversity from, um, from Africa to Kirklees, you can understand why the Jamaican um, 50th celebration is vitally important for the vibrancy and the culture of our town and, and the people who live in it. Okay, the Jamaican um, in the early 50s and 60s when they migrated from Jamaica to here, um, they had a very, very strong culture. Um, I mean, they had to really, you know, come into a strange country and everything. So they worked together as one. Um, and, you know, our parents then um, instilled that kind of oneness, that togetherness, working together. And in some respect, I, I think it's still there because Jamaicans love Jamaicans. They love when they meet other Jamaicans. And there is this connection between Jamaicans and Jamaicans as well. What I want to get across to everybody is just how passionate I am and the council is about life in Kirklees. And the Jamaican um, descent community have brought a huge amount over the years to that through carnival, through music, through cuisine, um, through actually getting involved in the community. And I want to um, both thank them for that and to look forward to the celebration that they're going to have on the 5th of August and see that as a real opportunity again to bring everyone um, in Huddersfield and in Kirklees together um, and cel celebrate not just that heritage but what the community can achieve going forward. And we're talking about the Jamaican descent community rightly, it's, it's their celebration, but I think it's an opportunity for the wider African heritage community to come together as well. Um, and, thinking about, and think about how we can use uh, that 50 years as a platform to moving on to the next stage. When I think of the Jamaican culture, and you're asking the right person, because I was born, bred, raised, lived, worked there. I think of the music, I think of the people, I think of the, the food, I think of our pastime, the folklore. I think of our, our island as a whole, how we are as a people. We are fearless, we are athletic, we are, everywhere we touch the world, we are there. And that, to me, sums up us as a cultural people. Well, Jamaica became independent in 1962. I was 16 <coughs> years of age and uh, was a member of our youth club, which we call a 4-H club in Jamaica. 
When we get independent, the Queen sent a message to Jamaica. It landed in, I can't remember exactly what day it was, in Montego Bay, and it relayed from Montego Bay all the way to, through to Hanover, Westmoreland, St. Elizabeth, onward on to going heading toward Kingston. So we were asked to do the relay for the Westmoreland brand, uh, leg of it. So we took it over from the Hanover runners all the way to St. Elizabeth and hand it over to St. Elizabeth and then return to her home. And, um, Jamaica Motto is out of many one people, which means to me, you know, in Jamaica you've got Chinese, you've got the Indian type looking people, white, Jamaican white, and everyone's just one really. They also have a saying in Jamaica that when, you know, when you come to Jamaica, it doesn't matter where you are or who you are, you are Jamaican. So I feel um, their motto is quite significant to that. I feel Jamaicans have brought to Kirklees their style, their swagger, the way they do things. We have a different approach to everything. We turn things around, everything we do it has to go the other way. It's just got to not be normal and that's what I think we bring. We bring a smile as well and, and, and music. Music is one of the main things we've brought to Kirklees. If you'd have told me that how, that we'd have teachers, if you were lawyers, nurses, doctors, you know, I wouldn't have believed it. So it's actually breaking some huge barriers that if you were to, you had told me that how our kids would actually be aspiring to go on to university, aiming for PhDs and so on, I would have said that's impossible. I think Jamaicans have brought a lot to Kirklees actually because when I hear my dad talking about what it was like when they came, it was drab, it was gloomy, uh, people didn't dress good <laughs> and you know they brought style with the men, they brought a lot of style with them, you know if you see them coming off the boat to the wind rush you can see that, uh, they also brought the culture, the music and the food, they're just a lively bunch of people. Jamaicans have brought a whole lot to Kirklees and from my viewpoint we've brought a rich heritage in terms of the music and the food and our real ethos for life. We are just a fun, loving set of people who just take people as they are and we try to mingle, would I say the word, with everybody. So if you look at all the different industries and see how hard that Jamaicans have worked, you can go into the uh, transport industry. I know a lot of Jamaicans took part in, you know, working on buses and actually having to, you know, engineer, work on the engineering, get them running, keep them running. The road systems, the infrastructures wouldn't be in Kirklees if they hadn't put in that hard work. Also nursing. Nursing, I think it got taken to another level when Jamaicans came here because it's not just what you're trained to do. It's not that you're trained how to interact with the staff, with the patients. It's how much you care. I think how you interact with a patient. People don't just get better because you've injected them with products or given them drugs. They get better because of the treatment. When you treat people with love and with care, the health, it skyrockets. So I think they injected that into the system. One of my favorite sayings came from my uncle Eddie, which he used to say, I burn your barn, so I put them, put yourself. <laughs> which means, was you born like that, or is it, did they make you that way? Did they make you go that way? <laughs> which is very good. See and blind, hear and deaf. That means do not interfere in people's business. And I am glad for that one because I don't like interfering in people's business, although they will interfere in mine. One of my favourite sayings from Jamaica is, what sweet nanny goat, I go run in belly. <laughs> and uh, and that, that means, you know, whatever makes you happy is going to come back to haunt you. <laughs> Favourite sayings from Jamaica that my parents used to say 
is um, you plan that man there. How come your man walks so funny? One foot I draw a code and one I set table, right? Which may, basically means he's unbalanced. And I used to just listen to that and think, what? Where did you get that from? That's, it's, it's not natural. It's natural to them. You know? Um. <laughs> oh, herring and shad. And we used to think, herring and shad. Oh, life of mackerel, herring and shad. I think, what on earth does that mean? My old man told me, the life of the mackerel, the herring and the shad, was a life never to be admired. Working hard and ending up in brine and salt and uh, he said work hard but make sure the outcome is the good result not like a herring and a shad or a mackerel no way no better than yard <laughs> which means there's no place like jamaica my 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 um, advice to the younger generation is to know where you are know where you're coming from know where you're going that's, 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 that's all I need to tell them. The message I would like to leave for the next Jamaican descendants. Look back. Before there's nothing left to look back at. Look back at your parents. Look back at your grandparents. See where they're from. See what they've brought. See what they can give you. Embrace the respect that they brought here. Embrace the culture. Embrace, most of all, the ambition that they came here with and their aim and their goals. Embrace them and pick up the baton and run. Don't stay back with the crowd on the streets, smoking, drinking and feeling that it will all happen for you. Because if it would all happen for you, they would have done that. So pick up their vibe and their work ethic and run with it. And never ever, ever feel that you have to hide your intelligence, your determination, your commitment to succeed. That's the message I'd like to leave for them. Lost, but obviously when I get to go back and represent my country like playing rugby, then, you know, you, you feel proud and you think, I'm glad I've got Jamaica on my back. My grandma from my dad's side is from Jamaica and lives in Sandy Bay, Hanover. I have aunties, uncles and cousins living in Jamaica. Also, I have an uncle living near Kingston. I haven't visited Jamaica yet, but from my family pictures, it looks like a beautiful place. And I think being Jamaican is unique because of all the beach and the food. But my favourite dishes uh, ackee and salt fish and curry gone rice. And the best thing I like Jam about being in Jamaica is the beach because it's very fun to go play by and um, Nana just lives up the road from the beach. I for one am very proud of being a Jamaican, a black Jamaican girl. You, know, you feel proud to, I feel proud when I put on that top and sing a national anthem. If there's one thing about Jamaican people, you have to talk about their exotic mouth for and juicy flavouring food. You know, they enjoy cooking their food from, you know, uh, spicy chicken, curry goat, rice and peas, yam, callaloo, and stuffed fish, plus many more. First of all, the, my first single, my favourite Jamaican food solely is plantain. So whatever Jamaican dish I eat, plantain must go with that dish. First I must say rice and peas and chicken, or I could say rice and peas and curry goat, but equally salt fish and ackee. But like I said, plantain must go whatever dish I eat with Jamaican food. Um, food, rice and peas. Rice and peas, I love my rice and peas. Sundays are not Sundays. If I'm not eating rice and peas on a Sunday, it ain't a Sunday. So I could keep going. <laughs> I've got a few favourites. My favourite Jamaican dish, believe it or not, is oxtail, cooked authentically by a real Jamaican, especially the older generation. Yes, big things. 5th of August 2012 in Greenhead Park, Huddersfield, we're having a huge festival of music and athletics. Uh, it's the day of the 100 metre final where we expect Jamaica to get gold, silver and bronze. We're having a big stage, big screen. Um, we're going to have 
um, VIP village, um, Jamaican food, dancers, all sorts of performances. There's a, it's a huge day for the family. Just check out www.gif50.co.uk for all the details and we'll see you there.